Anyway, um, so Mr. Tan King Lin has given you a broad overview of the tax structure in Singapore and he has also asked the question whether the system is fair. So I think we will touch a bit more about this uh, in this presentation. So um, Mr. Leong, Mr. Yen and I have written a pamphlet on how much tax Singaporeans are paying. So I'm going to give you an overview of that and then I will go into a bit of the budgetary issues in Singapore. Okay? So um, for the start, I'm going to look at a comparative perspective uh, with uh, Sweden and Finland. Uh, we look at Sweden and Finland because they are the countries which pays the highest tax. And Singapore is known as the country which pays the, the lowest tax among the high income countries. So we'll look at that. And also because the um, high uh, Sweden and Finland, the Nordic countries, they are also the happiest countries, most innovative, most productive. So let's compare Singapore with them. Okay? Um, if you look at personal income tax, it has always been known that Singaporeans pay a low personal income tax, right? We pay 10% of the total proportion of GDP. Uh, sorry, uh, total amount of uh, uh, government revenue. Okay, so um, and then if you look at Finland and Sweden, they pay 34 and 40 percent respectively. So in comparison, it looks quite low, right? But the thing is, uh, when you look at when you compare with indirect tax, Singaporeans actually pay 3.5 times more into indirect tax, whereas for Finland and Sweden, they only pay one time more into indirect tax. So we're paying a lot more tax in a sense. Okay, and then if you look at Social Security or CPF, we actually pay three times more into CPF. Whereas in Finland and Sweden, they only pay one time more and 0.5 times more in Finland and Sweden respectively. So again, we are paying a lot more into CPF. Uh, there might be a question about whether CPF is our money, so uh, I'll touch a bit on it later. Okay? <laughs> because it's not our money. Um, so I guess I don't have to touch on that. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So if you add it all up, if you look at how much Singaporeans are paying into tax, personal income tax, indirect tax, and social security, CPF, we're actually paying 86% into um, uh, tax and CPF out of government revenue. Whereas if you compare with Finland and Sweden, they pay 94 and 97% respectively. So actually when you look at it, it's not very different. Singaporeans don't pay low taxes at all. Okay. Um, okay. Why, why is the issue of low tax important? The issue of low tax is important because we then need to put social protection into perspective. The government is spending money back to us for transport, healthcare, etc. But are they spending enough? So this is the backdrop for that. Okay? Um, for personal, <clears throat> the other thing I want to touch on is on personal income. Uh, so we pay tax and social CPF, but the other thing that we also need to pay is out-of-pocket expenditure. The out-of-pocket expenditure that we've calculated is about one time more than what we pay into uh, personal income tax and CPF. Okay? But when you look at Finland and Sweden, they don't actually have to pay anything else. They pay next to nothing for healthcare, for education, etc. Okay? So that means that if you add up, Singaporeans actually pay another time more uh, on top of CPF and uh, personal income tax, if you include out-of-pocket expenditure. Okay? Maybe I'll give you the per capita figures, it will be a bit clearer. Okay, we've calculated that um, this is out of the resident population of each country. So if you look at personal income tax, Singaporeans pay per capita 2,000 into personal income tax. Whereas in Finland and Sweden, they pay about 10,000 and 15,000 per capita into personal income tax. Then if you look at CPF, Singaporeans pay three times more, so that's 6,000. And in Finland and Sweden, they pay 7,000 and 6,000 per capita. So actually when you look at it, it's not very different when you look at CPF. Okay? We'll, add up, we'll add up more. So when you add up personal income tax and CPF, we actually pay 8,000 in total. And then uh, in Finland and Sweden, this is 17,000 and 21,000. Okay, and when you add in out of pocket expenditure, which I say is about one time more than what we pay to personal income tax and CPF, right? So that's 8,000 again. So if you add up how much we actually have to pay out of pocket, okay, so Finland and Sweden, they don't have to pay um, anything else more. Uh, so if you add up how much we pay out of pocket into, and then with personal income tax and CPF, we actually pay 16,000. And if you compare with Finland and Sweden, they pay 17,000 and 21,000 per capita, which means that we are not paying that much different from them. Um, I think the question that we have to ask too is, because right now Singaporeans have to pay out of pocket for healthcare, for education, but for the Finland, uh, for the Nordic countries, they pay everything into tax and CPF, uh, social security, but they get back in return uh, free healthcare, free education, etc. Now in Singapore, uh, it's estimated that perhaps 40% of Singaporeans are not able to buy um, health, uh, private health care insurance, which means they fall out of the system. The thing in Singapore is that it's very unequal because there's very low taxes, the rest of the money comes out from our own pocket. But because a lot of the poor and the low income and the lower middle income they cannot afford, so they fall out of the system. So the question we have to ask is do we want a system where the government consolidates the money? A responsible 
government consolidate some money and redistribute it so that even the low income, middle income and high income can also benefit. In the in these Nordic countries, how they work is regardless of your income level, you do get a subsidy that is fair and um, that that is uh, affordable for you in a sense. So the question now is, should we want a system that's more equal or a system that's, that's so unequal that the low income and the low middle income fall out? Okay. Can I? Can I? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is how much the government pays back to us in social protection. In Singapore, the government gives back in social protection $10,000 per capita. Okay. In Finland and Sweden, the government gives back $24,000 and $28,000 per capita. Okay. And if we add in indirect tax into what we pay, so personal income tax, CPF, out of pocket, plus indirect tax, we pay about 22000 And in Finland and Sweden, they pay 27000 and $36,000 per capita. So if you look at how much the government gives back in social protection as a proportion of that, the government only gives back 43% in Singapore. But in Finland and Sweden, the government gives back 89% and 79% respectively, which is a lot higher. Okay. So if the government is spending as much as what the Nordic countries is spending, they should be giving back about $18,000. So that's about twice as much. Which, what this means is that there's actually a loss of expenditure of about $8,000, which the government is not giving back. Okay, if you compare it with the uh, Nordic countries. Okay, so um, I want to move into talk, uh, talking about wages. The, we need to look at how much we pay in taxes in perspective. So we pay as much, almost as much as the Nordic countries into tax and CPF and social security, right? But if you look at wages, in Singapore, Singaporeans, out of the total GDP, Singaporeans only get 42% of that back into wages. Okay, but in the Nordic countries, the governments, uh, the people will get like sixty percent uh, wage. Okay, which means that Singaporeans get about twenty percentage points lower in terms of what we should get back in wages. For the other, for the other high income countries, they pay um, fifty five to sixty percent into uh, wage wages. While in Singapore, it's only forty two percent. Okay, so when you look at that in perspective, that means that Singaporeans, the median wage is about three thousand. So um, in a year, it's thirty six thousand. Okay, if so in Finland, they earn almost 160 times, 160 percent more. They earn 56,000 per year. And in Sweden, they earn almost 170 percent more. They earn 60,000 per year. So now we pay almost the same as what they do into personal income tax, CPF, out-of-pocket expenditure, but we get a much lower wage. So what that means is that we spend 65 percent of our wage paying for all these things. Whereas in Finland, they only need to pay 47%, and in Sweden, they only need to pay 59%. And so we pay the highest proportion, and we have the lowest. The, the purple bar is how much we have left. Even if you just look at the purple bar as compared to this proportion, you can see that our purchasing power is very, very low. Because we are paying almost the same, but because our wages are so low, our purchasing power is also very low. Uh, a study done by UBS in 2011 ranked Singapore as having the lowest purchasing power, which is almost the same as Kuala Lumpur, which is actually, but we are four times more uh, richer than them by GDP per capita, yet we have the same purchasing power. So that's, that's very bad. 